Hi, my name is Dr. Agnes Pearl and I'm a pediatrician based in Poland. Welcome to my next video. On a daily basis I work with young patients and in my free time I draw and create medical comics. <laughs> my goal is to show that medicine can be and is fun. It is important to me that every patient, boy or a girl, fully understands the stages of medical treatment and diagnosis because the fear of the visit very often results from the fear of the unknown. If you like this video, please consider to subscribe and like. Leave a comment down below what kind of topic seems interesting for you. And now let's get started. One day, a boy with his mother came to my office. The boy's name was, for example, John, and he was, let's say, about five years old. He came to uh, the checkup examination, which is a general health examination. The visit went smoothly until, suddenly, during the heart auscultation, I've noticed that the boy's heart was beating differently unevenly. Neither the boy nor the mother noticed anything disturbing. After all, only during auscultation with a stethoscope we are able to tell how the heart beats. Something was wrong here, so I've prescribed a referral for an ECG examination. But ECG, what is it? What is it for? Let's start from the beginning. ECG test stands for electrocardiographic test. As the name suggests, this is a test showing a record of the electrical activity of the heart in the form of a graph. That's right, electricity flows in your heart. Thanks to the special electrical impulse, your heart is beating properly. So every contraction of the heart muscle depends on this electrical impulse that arises in every heart. So that means that if the pediatrician during auscultation of your heart hears something irregular, uneven, he wants to see on this graph if this irregular rhythm is incorrect or is everything okay. This can be compared to a situation where, where you're trying to write down the melody on a staff. Your heartbeat is the melody and the staff will be the ECG. So a person reading these notes can recreate the melody. This is the same. If you are interested in the information that we can take out of an ECG graph, please stay tuned to the end. I will talk about it a little bit later. Okay, we know that the doctor recommended an ECG test, but how is it made? I often explain to my patients that this situation is very magical. This test is very magical because they will produce a picture without touching any pen. First of all, to properly perform these, this examination, you need to lie down on a special bed and you need to stay there for a few seconds. This would be the hardest part for you, I know. The ECG recording is made by a special machine from which the finished printout is released. Ten cables come out of the machine and they are terminated with special colorful electrodes. These are the ones who, when they touch your body, can really read the electrical impulse that the heart is producing. And really thanks to these electrodes the picture is created. We can call them the eyes of the machine. We have two groups of electrodes and it is very important to put them in the correct order on the patient's body. That's why they are so colorful. The first group consists of precordial electrodes. These are placed on the patient's chest plate. They often have the shape of a balloon, which as you can see here, 
sucks the skin slightly and sticks to it for a moment. But in children we often simply use stickers. The second group of electrodes is called lymph electrodes because we put them on your hands and feet. These are the clips that grab your body and hold it for a while. It doesn't hurt. So when the electrodes, the eyes of the machine, are placed in the correct order on the patient's body, the most important task for you as a patient is to lay still for a while, not to move. This is the moment when the machine processes the information that is brought by the electrodes. When the process is done, the printer, so the magical pen, will produce 12 different shapes and patterns and sometimes a few numbers. This is the ECG record. And ready! The electrodes can be removed from your body and you can go play. It's that simple. So you already know what an ECG is, but I think you've got some questions, don't you? Do I need to prepare myself in any way for this study? No, the examination can be performed at any hour of the day or night. Do I have to fast? Definitely not. You can eat normally. Do I have to lie down? Well, definitely, yeah. You have to lie down for a standard ECG test. If the heart is a muscle that sends impulses, do other muscles also produce such electricity? And can you see it in the ECG record? That's right. That's a very good question. The heart muscle is a special one. The impulses that come from it, they are very, very strong. So it is easy to find them in the ECG. However, your muscles, which are called skeleton muscles, they move also and they produce the electricity too. But it's a lot weaker. This is another reason why you need to lie down during the examination, the ECG record. Because when you're lying down, your muscles aren't so tense. This is how the ECG graph will look better because the impulses from the skeletal muscles won't be seenable. Does it hurt? I think you know right now that it doesn't hurt at all. How long does it take? Well, it all depends on you. A properly done ECG test takes about a few minutes time. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. But right now you probably want to know what did I read from the John's ECG test, don't you? First of all, I found that where the impulse in his heart arises and which path does it follow. From the ECG report we can see also, indirectly, the placement of the heart in the chest. And in John it was normal. We can also see that the sizes of the heart chambers and the size of the heart muscle are okay because they are in the norm. And indeed, it was possible to capture an extra beat. This was the cause of the irregularity in the heart rhythm during auscultation. Thanks to the graph, I saw the morphology of the extra beat and this is how I could tell what John should do next, which tests he should do next. But what kind of further research I told John to do well, there's a topic for another story. Maybe I will tell you one day about it. And that's all for today. I hope you liked this video. I really think that after watching this video, no one will be afraid of it because you know what it takes to do an SCG. I still think it's magic. Thanks so much for watching. I see you on the next one. Bye!